After months of waiting, NASA finally revealed a new update of the Starship Human Landing System. But it's strange to say the least. According to NASA, SpaceX is sending only a skeleton version of its lunar Starship spacecraft to the surface of the moon during an upcoming uncrewed test mission. It'll be so stripped down, in fact, that it won't even be required to demonstrate that it can take back off after landing. Why exactly is that, and what does it mean for the Artemis program? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. During a presentation at the annual meeting of NASA's Lunar Exploration Analysis Group, or LEAG, on August 23rd, Lisa Watson Morgan, manager of the Human Landing System program, said the Starship that performs the uncrewed landing demo mission won't necessarily be identical to the vehicle that will be used to transport astronauts to and from the surface of the moon on Artemis 3 as soon as 2025. For the uncrewed demo, the goal is to have a safe landing, she said. The uncrewed demo is not necessarily planned to be the same starship that you see for the crewed demo. It's going to be a skeleton because it just has to land. It does not have to take back off. Clearly we want it to, she added referring to a takeoff, but the requirements are for it to land. That uncrewed landing scheduled for no earlier than 2024 is a key test ahead of the crewed Artemis 3 mission. Watson Morgan said that the uncrewed landing will take place in the south polar regions of the moon, but no decisions have been made on a landing site, including whether it will be one of the 13 regions NASA announced on August 19th that would be considered for the Artemis 3 mission. One factor in choosing a landing site, she said, was to preserve science in the future by not disrupting any Artemis 3 landing sites. There will be an opportunity to do science on the uncrewed demo landing, that includes flying a suite of sensors and imagers and potentially one payload, she said, but didn't specify what kinds of sensors or payloads might fly. The types of payloads NASA were interested in flying include those that don't require a tremendous amount of upkeep. However, she and others said they want to maximize the performance that Starship offers on lunar landings with the potential to carry large payloads. While the original HLS competition had a requirement to carry only 100 kilograms of cargo to the surface and back in addition to two astronauts, said Logan Kennedy, HLS surface lead at NASA, the later sustained missions will increase that to 182 kilograms to the surface and 160 kilograms back, with a goal of 1,000 kilograms down and back. We're going to leverage all that we can on this mission to try and take up and down as much as we can, using the size of their system, Watson Morgan said. She said, SpaceX has been a fantastic partner on HLS so far with close cooperation between the company and the agency. SpaceX has been involved with the Artemis 3 landing site selection process to ensure potential landing regions are compatible with Starship. NASA, in turn, has its personnel, including astronauts, visiting SpaceX facilities for reviews and hardware tests. That includes one of the unique attributes of Starship, the elevator required to go from the crew cabin to the surface. It's a very tall lander. It doesn't look like the traditional landers that we've all seen in the past, so it can be hard to reconcile that mentally, Watson Morgan said. She assured scientists at the meeting that the elevator design was robust, saying it was multi-fault tolerant and designed for operating in lunar conditions. In his presentation, Kennedy showed images of a full-scale mock-up of the elevator that SpaceX built for crew-in-the-loop tests, including ones where astronauts wore simulated spacesuits to test the ability to get in and out of the elevator. Some aspects of the overall Starship lunar landing architecture, though, remain unclear. The concept of operations for the lander involves SpaceX launching a Starship into low Earth orbit that will serve as a fuel depot, which is filled by subsequent Starship launches that serve as tankers. The lunar lander Starship will then launch will fill its tanks at the depot and head to lunar orbit. Neither NASA nor SpaceX, though, have said exactly how many launches will be required for a single Starship lunar landing mission, an issue of contention during protests of the SpaceX HLS award last year by Blue Origin. SpaceX is envisioning the spacecraft to also serve as a mobile fuel tank, providing a place for other Starship to refuel in orbit before heading to Moontown. 
Last year, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk wagered a guess, estimating that it will take a max of eight starships worth of fuel to get to the moon and back. And then there's still the considerable task of safely getting humans down to the surface, back into the spacecraft, and safely launch back into orbit. A gargantuan task in and of itself. Or as Watson Morgan said, how many? However many is needed, that is how many will launch. NASA's requirements for HLS missions end once the astronauts are returned to Orion, Kennedy said of the fate of the Starship lander after returning astronauts from the lunar surface. We don't tell them to do anything with it. That's going to be up to SpaceX. Regardless, we still need to launch Artemis 1 first. The historic kickoff to humanity's return to the moon is all set for launch. NASA's Artemis 1 mission just completed its flight readiness review on Monday, with the space agency giving it the final go for a two-hour launch window that opens at 8.33 a.m. ET on August 29th. We are go for launch, which is absolutely outstanding, NASA Associate Administrator Robert Cabana told reporters at a press conference Monday night. This day has been a long time coming. The space launch system is currently resting tall on Launch Pad 39B at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. SLS will attempt to deliver the Orion capsule to space, where it will make a close flyby of the moon and return to Earth at the conclusion of its 42-day trip. A key objective of the mission is to test Orion's heat shield during re-entry through Earth's atmosphere, a task that'll be considerably less stressful to achieve given there's no actual crew on board. Artemis 1 is the first integrated test flight of SLS and Orion, setting the stage for the launch of the subsequent Artemis 2 II and 3 missions. Artemis 2, which NASA hopes to launch in 2024, will have a crew on board, but won't land on the surface of the moon. That's reserved for the main event, Artemis 3, in which NASA seeks to land a man and the first woman on the moon by late 2025. The initiation of the Artemis era is set to draw a huge crowd, with more than 100,000 visitors expected to gather for the inaugural launch of the SLS rocket at Kennedy Space Center and areas from which the launch will be seen. Despite the interesting choice of sending a skeletal starship, how do you feel about the rest of the Artemis campaign to regain access to the moon? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. And that's it for today's episode. We sincerely thank you for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.